Hey there, thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time where we can relax and craft for about an hour, and I work all the way through projects from beginning to end, so you can be part of the whole process along the way, and we can chit-chat and uh, share what we're working on and uh, just uh, hang out together. So, all right, you guys, tonight we are uh, continuing with the Splendid Sampler 2 quilt along. We are gonna do with some more embroidery. We are working on the Let's Go Sew block, and we are a pretty good, uh, we're, we're at a good clip on this already. So we are going to continue on the frame bit down here. I suppose we're about halfway done because we have to do two more flowers, this little uh, bit at the bottom, and then the word sew in there yet. So we'll work on this a couple more days. I am going to get my old Kenmore sewing machine out uh, later this week, hopefully. Uh, it would be fun to start sewing on that guy again just for a little bit. I did get notification from my uh, uh, my sewing machine guy that my my sewing machine, my other Kenmore that I work that I usually work on, it's actually done. <laughs> so they said like four to six weeks, and it was done in like you know a week tops. So <laughs> uh, so I'll I'll actually go pick that up. But I think even though I'll have that back, I think let's get the that old. Uh, that 40s steampunk Kenmore out and so with that for a little it'd be fun to just play around with it I haven't really sewn much on it at all so it'd be neat to learn the new machine uh, so we'll be uh, getting that out when we're done with this uh, this stitched block here so all right I'm gonna flip you around and we'll get going thanks again for joining me guys all right back in stitch land today. So here is our sew block. Um, we are doing it with stem stitch and uh, French knot. So here we are. So far it's coming along. I've just been kind of um, moving my hoop around the the place. So a lot of times I like stitching all the same color first, but this time I'm just moving around. So we're going to do this guy here next. Oh, funny Gretchen, you think you know more about my sewing machine than than yours. Yeah, so we've I've learned a ton about my sewing machine since starting this uh, these Facebook lives too. Just um I've learned how to clean it. Um, let's, let's just put it on like this. Uh, I've learned to just take care of it a little bit more. Hopefully the feed dogs work now or it can get lowered. That's why I brought it into, um, the, into the sewing machine guy. We had to go there anyway, uh, to get our vacuum cleaner. And, uh, so I just dropped off the sewing machine. So hopefully he got those feed dogs to be able to go down and I'm going to ask him how he did it. I think he just heated it up. So I could probably just put a hot fan on it or something or like a, a blow dryer. I don't know. We'll see. But I thought it'd still be fun to work on that old steampunk 40s Kenmore. I think that would be just fun to get out because why not? That's what it's there for. It's to play around with. So I need to do that. All right, so prepping my threads again. So in the instructions, it says to use two strands of thread, but I accidentally did that wrong when I did my first flower. I, I did three strands. So for the for this light orange color, I've been using uh, three strands, but for this uh, coral orange color, I've been using just two. So I need three strands for this. So let's pull them out. That's one. So I hope everyone had a lovely weekend. It is Monday again. <laughs> I feels like it's midweek already to me. Okay, here we are. It was nice seeing family though. It's got to see some family in town this weekend. So today was all back to business. All right. So I got my three strands. 
Oh yeah, we learned about the belts, we learned about so many things with the sewing machine. And what's neat about this, uh, this other sewing machine, this Kenmore from the 40s, the steampunk one, I call it the steampunk one, that one is, um, that does not have a belt. That one uses, oh, what are they called? Like a, a roller driver. That's not what it's called. Do you guys remember what it's called? It, it's just that, that wheel that turns it. Drive wheel. It's a drive wheel. That's what it's called. So it, it has a completely different mechanism uh, to make the machine go. So that'll be kind of fun to look at. Um, when I when I get that out, it's just it's a different thing altogether. And actually, um, one thing that happens when it sits around for a while is that uh, drive wheel. Oh, did I, I forgot what it was called again. Did I did I call it a drive wheel? I think so. Anyway, that can sometimes get kind of flattened if it's sitting for a long time and you know it's an antique sewing machine so mine was um kind of flat and it still works but it makes it's just like kind of kerchunks and and slides a little when it hits that flat part of the wheel so when i go pick up when i go pick up my sewing machine my other sewing machine my 70s kenmore uh, i think i'm going to see if they have one of those drive wheels. I'm gonna try and take it off of the machine and I'm gonna see if they have one there that I can purchase. So I'll get, I'll get that as well, which would be cool. Fix up that guy while I, while I can too. All right, we're stem stitching around this flower. I always kind of like to do the the um, French knots last. So I've got to do these French knots too since I'm kind of in this area. So when I stitch this branch, I'll have these French knots kind of in my way, but I'd you know, rather do it while, I have, while I'm working on the color, that color floss. So I think the uh, Steampunk Kenmore sewing machine, I think that's from 42? I'll have to look it up again. I did a video on it a while back when I when I got it from um, from this big sewing rummage sale, like it's a special rummage sale that they put on in the city here, like once or twice a year, for sewing stuff. And uh, uh, for that, I did a I did a video when I got it, and uh, I think I looked up all the information then. So I'm gonna have to check that out again, <laughs> look it all up again. It's either like 47 or 42. I can't remember. I'm excited though. I'll have to take it out of the cabinet because it's screwed into the into a cabinet. So it looks like a little side table, but it's really not. It's a magic sewing machine in there. I got some plants on it right now, so I'll have to take the plants off and figure out how to unscrew it. But I'm excited. It'll be fun to get out and, and use. I haven't really done a project on it yet. Hey, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that, actually. Yep, so that'll be uh, once we finish this up. I want to finish this embroidery first, get this out of the way, and then, then we'll switch over to another sewing project. Um, on one of these blocks, we'll do another piece block or something and, and get that out. So I'm going into the back of the stitch here because I need to come up through the same hole that I just went down into. So if I wrap it around a stitch on the back, then, you know, I won't pop out this. I won't, you know, I can go out the same hole that I just went into. Oh wow, you went to, to Sydney, Jennifer. Was that a vacation? Were you just uh, walking around? Yeah, we did a lot of walking this weekend too. It's kind of nice. It was so beautiful out. We're, we're finally having some beautiful, beautiful days. Actually, it's been kind of rainy, but within that rain has been some just really lovely weather.
I might go for a walk after we're done here again if it's not raining. We tried to go for a walk, my husband and me, about an hour ago, but it just started sprinkling on us, so we didn't, we didn't make it very far. But everything just smells so nice, being all rained on, and everything's growing like a foot a, a day sort of thing. We have some grasses, like some tall decorative grasses outside our window here, and I swear it was a foot higher today than it was yesterday. It's kind of crazy. Oh, that's cool, Jennifer. That's nice. Sounds like fun. So I have been putting together samples of a pile of new embroidery kits uh, this weekend and, and uh, today. So I am soon I'll be able to share. I've been doing throwing some sneak peeks on Instagram and Facebook, uh, but I'm hoping soon I'll be able to share um, the, the actual kits that, that uh, new kits that we're hoping to have made. I'm getting some samples made um, before putting it up in the shop and everything. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I'm excited though. So we've been cranking out embroideries and working on designs. It's just been embroidery-tastic this month. <laughs> I think it'll be fun though. I think, hopefully you guys like some of the new stuff. Right, done with that flower. I'm trying to super cruise this stuff along, um, trying to get, get as much done on this per day now. All right, doing the French knots. I have one hiding up on the outside here. I'm just gonna let my thread spin out a little bit. It's getting a little twisty. All right, and then I'm gonna hopefully have enough thread to do these guys down here too. Then we'll move the hoop and we'll get more of this area in. Actually, maybe the hoop should stay. I can, I can start on this stuff. I think I'll, you know, it's kind of like a separate stem here. So I think I'll get these th French knots then I think I'll stitch this stem so that my stitches are kind of going in that direction. And then I'll move the hoop and do this this um, like leafy stem going the other way. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So I'm gonna leave the hoop for this orange, that next area. Some people do French knots where at this point they'll hold, they'll just hold um, this tight. That scares me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that. Here, I, I like holding the actual knot. Ugh, yeah, I don't know. I like I like my fingers touching the loops as they go. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have barely enough thread again. Like right here, I, I like actually physically holding those loops. I feel like they don't get away from me then. Like they can some other time. Looking forward to seeing new kids, yay! And honestly, I, I would still take requests if you guys are looking for a certain kit. Now that it, we, we have some cute new packaging um, that we're hopefully gonna get made, a lot of them. We'll see, we're working on it. Uh, but I think it'll be, there's options now to, to make some new ones yet. All right, I have just enough thread to do this one. All right, last little knot and I timed my thread just right. I have just enough thread for a French knot and to tuck in the end, so that was lucky. It might just be, you know, maybe I'm at the point now where I can just 
instinctually estimate the right amount of thread. That'd be a, a cool trick if that was the case. All right, back and forth three times. All right, cruising, we are cruising. All right, I am going to do this little stem part here. And uh, that is, I have one little piece of this floss left, this coral, and then I'll have to get a new piece. So this already has the two strands. So we're actually good to go right now. I'm gonna still, I'm gonna weave in the ends or weave in um, the backs of these stitches here and then just kind of leap to where I need to be. Okay. Oops, I just pulled on this a little bit. Hopefully I didn't wreck my French knots. I might have pulled this one a little tight. Ugh, oh well. That's why I want to do French knots last. Oh well. I think it'll be fine. Okay, how should I do this? I think I'll do this little side stem first. Yeah, just because I'm down here. So I gotta be careful to not accidentally grab my thread on any of these French knots. All right, now I'm gonna jump down here. So now I think I'm gonna go this whole line. This looks like it's one line, so I'm gonna go like that. Then I'll come back and get these two extras. Oh yeah, traveling, like that completely wipes me out too. Sometimes I need like the whole next day to just, like my brain just won't work and I, I would, I'm would i just like so sore and tired. I don't know, it sucks, it sucks me uh, dry a little bit. All right, oops, sorry, I bumped you guys there. Okay, one last stitch close to that French knot. All right, I'm gonna jump up here and do this little stitch. I think that's enough there. And I'm gonna jump down to here. Do this stitch. Oh gosh, yeah, especially when there's a time change involved, for sure. I may have enough thread to get one of these little leaves. Let's give that a try. All right, so this guy's done. I can leap over here. Oh, that is so cute with, with the little orange French knots at the end of that. Okay, this is barely enough thread, I think, to get around this leaf, but it would be cool to not waste waste the thread. It'd be nice to be able to get one of one of these done. All right, I'm gonna do smaller stitches around this curve. Oh, you've been working on the grandma's legacy with the one with the the teacup. Oh, it makes your left hand cramp up from holding the um, from holding the from holding the uh, the hoop. Or are you, are you doing it without 
a hoop. I think that might make my hand cramp up a little bit doing it without a hoop. Uh, if it is cramping up, you might um, benefit from an embroidery stand. Then, um, then you don't have to hold it. Oh, your sewing hand. Yeah. Mine gets like that too if I'm stitching for a long time. All right, one of those guys got done. So let's weave in the ends. I'm happy about that. And we will move our hoop and do a little bit more. Oh man, Nolene, I, I, I uh, hate stitching under a deadline like that. That's, that can, I don't know, when it, when it becomes stressful to work on the thing you like doing, that, that's not always fun. All right, there we are. Cute. All right, let's move on. These are some of my new, I have some new hoops that I'm working with. These are uh, bamboo hoops, which I'm really liking so far. It's just neat to be using bamboo. All right, I'm going to I'm going to finish this little leafy thing. That's kind of all that I can fit in my hoop here, and then I will uh, move the hoop again, and we'll get that other corner. <laughs> I know, right, Barbara? So um, I I'm looking into getting a patent for that and getting it produced. So I I'm looking into it like for reals. So I would love to make, uh, I showed you guys that, um, oop, I need, hold on, I need some more floss. We're going to get it off of my big giant uh, spool. I'll still, I, I'd like to do a sale for these spools yet, too, coming up here. Um, oops, I'm catching all my other thread. But I think I am going to check out or check into... Uh, one of those uh, trying to patent that holder and stuff. So, <laughs> yep, yay, a notion by me. Yep, hopefully, hopefully that'll be the case. That's a good question. I wonder if that would be considered a notion. Huh. I suppose, um, I suppose if you sell notions it would fit within there. Okay, maybe a tool. Tools and notions? Notions are all kind of tools though, aren't they? I don't know. But yeah, so I, I'm looking into it and actually that's why I took all the videos down of it. <laughs> so you guys got a, if you guys were here that day, you got a sneak peek of it. Um, but I took the videos down just so it's not out there until I, um, Get it? Oh, do you tell me? Um, if if you uh you knew uh, it went by so fast, so I didn't see who said that, but uh, direct message me uh, their information. But yeah, we're super duper busy this week. But I think uh, starting next week we might actually dig into it a, a little bit more. We played around with that idea like a year or so. Oh shoot! Yep, two threads. Did I do three again? Yep, you're right. Hooey, Patty, you saved me just right on time. So let's let's take <laughs> take the one out. I am so crazy used to doing three strands that I, I'm just doing it instinctually. <laughs> All right, caught me just on time. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> Back to two strands. Whew, close one. <laughs> funny. Oops, let's go this way first. But yeah, we talked about getting a patent for that um, or working on that. Oops, sorry, I bumped you guys again. A little while back, but it just wasn't the right time. But now, 
now we actually have a way that we could actually get it produced. So now might be the time to do it. So we're going to get it going. What a rule. Yeah. I'm that's a good question, Leslie. I'm not sure. Would rulers, I mean, I suppose, I mean, you know, I guess it depends who you're talking to, you know? Some people might just call them all notions or them all tools. I don't know. Whatever word you want to use, I suppose. Notions, actually, for me, I don't, I don't use that in my normal vocabulary of sewing stuff just because I didn't really ever use that term until, uh, you know, I, I first started hearing it once I was in the sewing industry sort of thing. So for me, it, it's just tools and materials and I don't know, I call them all gadgets. <laughs> sewing notions are just like gadgets. Yeah, exactly, Leslie. So it can be used for like all different things. I mean, embroidery would be just like one idea for it. So I don't know. It'd be fun if they were different colors and stuff too. We'll see. I am. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm actively looking into it. I think it'd be kind of fun. Get some priced and design some samples and and all that. Kind of excited. That'll be fun. Exactly, an extra hand. You think of notions as supplies that end up in your project. Oh, that's a good way of thinking about it. Notions end up in the project, like zippers and, and uh, buttons and that sort of thing. I like that. If it's in the project, call it a notion. If it's a gadget, call it a tool <laughs> or a gadget. Oh, Jennifer, uh, in uh, one of my last videos, I had an idea for a new, uh, um, just a new tool that might help us out as embroiderers. And um, I took down all the, oops, I took down all the videos of it. So, because um, I think we're going to actually try and patent it. But I just kind of shared, shared it. It was a way to hold uh, embroidery hoops. Yeah, that's the perfect name, Nolene. Alyssa's third arm thingy. <laughs> oh, man. I'm definitely going to need help naming it because I'm not great at that. It would end up being called that. Ah, oh, you want one? That's, well, that's good to hear. So uh, I'm, you know, like I said, I think... Uh, I need to get a patent thing started with um, a lawyer just so it's at least patent pending. And then once we have that process started, then I can start um, contacting some manufacturers and I have a person that, that uh, can help me out with that a little bit. So we will see. Oh, you needed three, three of them over the weekend, Jennifer. That's the thing. They'd be, they, they, they'd be fabulous for travel. Anyway, I, I like it, and I'm happy to hear that <laughs> other people might like it. Cause for me, it was just like a goofy thing that I made just to help me out a little bit. Cause I didn't really like what's on the market. So we will see. Almost done with these leafies. We're gonna get really far on this tonight again. I don't think we'll finish it tomorrow. I think this might be a through through Wednesday sort of situation here, but that's okay. Uh, that that means we'll be sewing again by Thursday, and it'll be on that uh, that cool Kenmore sewing machine. Assuming I get that um, that uh, drive, roller drive thing, that drive wheel. The drive wheel, that's what it's called. <laughs> oh, 
All right, yeah, you guys, I'm gonna have to get the, once I have a real prototype um, of like the real thing before I get it produced, we will have like a naming party or something. Like we're gonna have to, we'll figure that out. I should have a little case that it comes in when it folds up too, that'd be good. Then it tra would travel easier maybe. All right. Oh, I gotta do the stem yet here. I'm trying to like do super speed stitching right now. <laughs> Hoop claw. <laughs> that's funny. That, uh, that's, that's just, those are two fun words together. Hoop and claw. <laughs> oh shoot. That's funny. All right, I am going to travel down here. So I need to come up for the same hole again. So I'm gonna just capture some of these stitches in the back, then come up through the same hole. And then we will move, uh, move the hoop right along. Hoopla, hoop claw. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> You're right. Hey, Mark, thanks for joining. All right, a couple more stitches and we're done with this fella. We really are going a whole lot faster than we were at the beginning of, of um, when we did our, our first like laurel thing over here. Getting the stem stitch down now, I suppose. All right, there we go. These stitches got a little bit big. It's wanting to spread a little bit. All right, remember to make my stitches a little bit smaller around the curves, but oh well. All right, let's weave in the end and we will move the hoop again. Well, it's airplane o'clock again, it sounds like. They're noisy tonight. Okay, let's snip that thread. I think this is just a little short to do anything for us, so I'm gonna toss that to the side. I got a little scrappy pile going of snips from tonight. Okay, let's move this along. Oh, this is gonna be it for the orange. We're gonna be done with that coral orange after just this little bit here. Ah, well, that's exciting. Yay. Okay, so let's get the hoop in there. Man, I'm really close to the edge, but it'll be okay. Oh, I won't have to move it. I can do the yellow right away again. Okay. Um. So it was two strands. Here's my first strand when I accidentally did um, separated this into three. So let's let's get one more strand. There we go. Two strands, not three. Okay, now I'm kind of getting a little bit more confident that we might actually finish this tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll finish this tomorrow. This one, uh, we got a lot done today already and there's there's time left yet. So uh, let's assume we'll be sewing on that crazy machine on uh, Wednesday now instead. This is going speedy. All right, there we are. Okay, I think I'm going to do this little side liner one first again, kind of like how I did on the last side. 
Thanks, Deborah. Yeah, I, I'm excited for this color palette. I think I think it's looking pretty cute. Definitely have plenty of thread to, for this little piece here. All right, I'm gonna go down this this one in the middle and then I'll come back for those guys. Then we'll do these French knots first as well. And then I'll jump up and do that and then get the rest of the French knots here. I don't know, what should my next block be? I'd like to do, you know, I was kind of into doing all that paper piecing, but, um, you know, maybe it'd be fun to do, well, I don't know, let's get that new sewing machine out um, and let's, you know, I might, maybe I'll do my leaders on it to just, to just test it out. So I have all those leaders that I've been making half square triangles. Um, so my sewing machine, like whenever I finish a row, I put a half square triangle in there. So I have a basket full of half square triangles. We could, we could um, start sewing some of those together. That might be a nice project for that Kenmore sewing machine. Maybe, maybe we, uh, maybe we take a teeny break, like for the rest of the week, on um, on these blocks. Like start these up again next week and uh, this week maybe we play with that sewing machine and we sew together a pile of those half square triangles start sewing them into blocks maybe that'd be kind of fun that'd be a good easy test uh for for that machine so we're not doing anything so intricate oh the winter star i will look that up bonnie i did want to do one that used that sewing machine so english paper piece and wouldn't uh wouldn't have a sewing machine involved. Uh, unless, I haven't seen that block, I'll have to look at it. But okay, noted, uh, the Winter Star, I will look at that one and see see what's uh, going on with that. But nope, I have not, not thought about the next block after this really. All right, so we, this is the last uh, stitch with this coral. Okay, winter star. So maybe we'll, well, let's look it up right now. I'm curious, what is the winter star one? I'm gonna see what page it's on. Is it called winter star? I'll check. Winter, oh, winter, winter flower? There's a winter flower, is that what you're talking about? 120. This winter flower one, this is, looks English paper piece. This this doesn't look so horrible. This would be kind of fun. Um, I don't think we did this one, did we? I don't think so, no. So yeah, we could uh, we could work on that one. Uh, let's, uh, like I said, we'll see. We'll play with that machine for a little bit. And yeah, I'm fine with, with doing that. All right, I'm gonna get, oh, I have a, I have strands ready already for this one. So let's, uh, I want to get these French knots. We'll get that guy done. Oh, nope, it's English paper piecing. Yeah, for sure. So you can kind of tell the difference between English paper piecing and um, foundation paper piecing at a quick glance because foundation paper piecing is more just slicing across shapes. Whereas English paper piecing, you have a lot of like Y seams that you're fitting together. Uh, so those are, that's kind of the difference at a, at a quick glance. I mean, physically there's, that's like a visual difference between them. Technique wise, they're completely different. All right. And last one. But yeah, so that one is all that winter flower. That is completely by hand. 
All right, stitching these little guys. We'll go around these three, then this one, and then we'll pick up that flower. Oh, you haven't done any of the English paper piecing yet. You'll save them until we do winter flower. All right, I will, oh, and curved shapes with English paper piecing. Does that one have curved shapes? No, that one doesn't. We did do that one that had curved shapes for English paper piecing. That has been the only time I've ever had a curved shape with, with English paper piecing. So for me, that was unusual. Um, but, you know, I'm not like a, I'm not like seeing, I'm not like an English paper piecing expert where I've done a bajillion different paper piecing things. But in my brain, that was pretty unique that there was curved, curved shapes. Yeah, I, yeah, I suppose the, I don't know, to me the clamshells, I suppose that's English paper piecing, but to me that's a little bit different than English paper piecing in my head. To me, we were just kind of making applique shapes and stitching it down with the clamshells. Uh, English paper piecing to me is a bunch of intricate shapes that you're sewing into each other to make, um, to make like your piece. It's not applique, like you're not appliquing it on something else. It's, uh, you're hooking them all together to make the, um, to make the piece. That was not a great definition. <laughs> I'll have to think about that a little bit, how I would define it. Yeah, hexes is, is um, one shape that you can make uh, with it for sure. All right, I'm going around this guy and then we'll get these three knots in the middle. How are we doing on time? Oh, I think we can get this flower done yet. I think we'll get this whole guy done and all we'll have left is that word so in the middle. So we might not only get this done tomorrow, we might get it done rather quickly tomorrow. That'd be kind of cool. If I manage to get that drive wheel off of my machine, then I'll pick up both, uh, I'll pick up the sewing machine and hopefully a new drive wheel um, tomorrow, we'll see. And if that's the case and we finish up this, this word so pretty quickly, then we can take a look at the, at the machine. Yeah, English paper pieces nest together to create a designer pattern. That is a great description, Lucy. It's not appliqued. Um, it's not, you know, there's similar things like in some form of applique, you might, you know, put a piece of fabric around a template, kind of how you would uh, with English paper piecing. But in English paper piecing, they all fit together. Um, yeah, to create the designer pattern you're not making a shape to stitch onto another shape. Hexes, uh, like hexagons is what we mean by that. Um, that's a pretty popular right now shape. And you know, historically shape for English paper piecing. I think one of the reasons it's popular is because it's really an easy shape to do with English paper piecing. And I think that's because all of the, um, well, first of all, you can hook together all the hexagons and it'll make like a little honeycomb um, look. So that's just easy to keep adding on more hexagons. Um, so that's, that's good. But all of its angles are like obtuse angles, right? Like they're bigger than 90 degrees, all of, all of the angles and those angles like obtuse angles I think are a hair at least for me they're a hair easier in found in uh, English paper piecing EPP um, than the smaller um, angles that are less than 90 degrees Uh, 
That's just my opinion, though. So, and, and they just hook together really easily in like that little hexagon pattern, that honeycomb pattern. So it's just, it's more, it's just a relaxing thing just to continuously make, make these hexagon shapes. So I think that's one reason they're pretty popular. Whereas this winter flower one, for example, that has several different uh, shaped templates so you do each of those templates and then you stitch them all together in the spot where they're meant to be. Whereas hexagons, they just all kind of fit together wherever you put them. Um, so you don't really have to think about it. But it, it is just one shape of, um, of what you can do with English paper piecing. All right, loop around there and then three French knots and we're done with, uh, with this color floss too. And oh my gosh, I'm, I'm getting there on the thread though again. I'm gonna have barely enough to make these French knots. I better make my stitches a little bit bigger <laughs> so I have enough thread. Yeah, hexes have made a huge comeback, which is kind of funny. I think it's, I mean, I think a big reason is, I mean, they're cute. But I think the act of making them is really relaxing and, and kind of rewarding. So I think that's one of the big reasons they've made a comeback. I mean, they're cute too, I suppose. That's a reason enough. But they are, there's, there's especially relaxing to do. All right, three French knots and we're done with this border. Ha <laughs> ha, we got a lot done today. I'm excited. We were speedy, speedy, speedy today. All right. My thread is almost falling off my needle. Last stitch. Do, 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 do. There we go. It's cute. All right, let's weave in those ends and uh, we will call it a border or a wreath. Wreath will be done. Then all we'll have left is the text, and I think we can pretty confidently get that done tomorrow. All right, let's take a look. Oh, it's pretty. Oh, I think those colors are really sweet together. So then the sew will be this kind of pale green color. And I think that'll be just kind of a fun little contrasty color um, to, uh, to this border. But I like it. I think it's looking cute. All right, you guys, I'm going to flip you around and we will call it an evening. But I think that was great, great progress. We'll for sure get this text done tomorrow. I don't see any reason. So um, if I that so assuming I get my sewing machines back tomorrow, um, or the machine and then replace that one part for the other one. Uh, we'll stitch this up quick and then we'll, we'll take a look at the machines. I think that'll be fun. All right, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll call it a night here. There we go, hello. Oh, Barbara, I like the, the pale colors too. So I'm just trying to get it working with um, the colors in my quilt a little bit so that's been a challenge but yeah I think these colors look how cute from far away oh it is just so sweet look at it love it all right and then that green oh I like it I think it's me just right I'm stoked so awesome you guys thank you again it's nice talking to you all again it's been it's been like four days right so it's been a long weekend here uh, I'll be here all week this week uh, so awesome. It was great seeing you all again. Great chit chatting. Uh, I'll get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies right when I'm done here. 
and it'll stay here on the Penguin and Fish Facebook page. And I'll be back again tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. It's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. So great seeing y'all again. Have an amazing evening. Good night.